Hello again, everybody. Hello, hello. Zach Attack is here with my attack sports for this Monday, March the 10th, 2014. All right. I haven't talked to any football lately because, of course, it's, of course, off season. Drafts coming up. I don't do draft stuff, I only watch the games. I don't care about, like, drafts. I don't follow that shit. You know, a lot of my friends and cousins do, but not me. But I did mention news, of course, we, I live in Detroit. Love them or hate them. Of course, the Detroit Lions, uh, of course, I unfortunately am a bandwagoner. But bandwagoner or not, it was a sad day yesterday as the owner of the Detroit Lions, William Clay Ford, died at the age of 88 just days before his 89th birthday. Many Detroit Lions have mixed emotions. Some people are sad for his passing. Some people are happy for his passing because maybe Lions can fucking win. <laughs> you know, but we'll see what happens. Maybe it'll make him more motivated now. You know, this is the year of changes for the Lions. They have the new coach this year. And, well, the family is going to still own like they did with the Pistons. You know, when uh, Bill Davidson died, the owner of the Pistons, their family owned it a little bit till they finally sold it to a new guy. So probably they will be the same thing with the Ford family. They're going to own the Lions for a little bit, then they'll probably sell it to somebody. Maybe Mike Illich. That's probably what everyone's thinking. Mike Illich. You know, the owner of the Red Wings and the Pist and the Red Wings and the La Tigers. You know, took down to the promised land. You know, Tigers got swept out of the World Series two years ago, but still, they went to the World Series, and Revings have won three Stanley Cups under its ownership. So, who knows? I don't know what the rules involving hockey teams owning football teams. But till then, we got, of course, the Lions owner dying. Rest in peace to him and condolences to the Ford family at the sad time. One of my friends works for Ford. So that also sucks, too, for not just football fans, but for automotive industry in general in Detroit. So there you go. Now, on with the wrestling news of the day. Starting with news on a former WWE diva and Dance from the Stars uh, one-up, Stacey Keebler. Now, she had been dating George Clooney. Of course, they broke up a few months ago, and now apparently she's dating a new guy, no longer dating him. Surprise! Wedding happened this past weekend for Stacey Kiba. She married her brand new boyfriend, now her husband, Jared Pobre. Need to find the name right, sorry. And a surprise intimate ceremony in Mexico. George Clooney sent his best wishes to Stacey by writing, My happiness is indescribable. Actually, not from George Clooney, but from Stacey herself. Sorry, mispronounced that shit. That Stacy says on here, marriage is the ultimate bond of love and friendship. It means putting all your faith and trust into a person that you can't help but to believe as your soulmate. Someone who has all your best interests at heart. Someone who had picked for you to help you grow and be the best person that you can be. Jared is all of this for me. She and Paul Bray have been friends for years and started dating last fall following the breakup with her and George Clooney. So... Like I said, it was, it, it was an amicable breakup between those two. But congrats to Stacey Kiba for her marriage. I met Stacey twice. She's a nice lady. She's a hot lady with those nice legs. And she may go back to WWE someday. I've been hearing rumors about that for months. But whether or not she comes back to WWE because she left kind of abruptly. Because after the whole Dance from the Stars thing, she kind of separated herself from wrestling. She took so many opportunities. She became the female rock, you know, almost. So, nice to see Stacey Keeper find some happiness. Congrats to Stacey for her surprise marriage. Now, on some TNA news. Of course, last night was TNA's lockdown pay-per-view. I, I didn't see it. For one, I don't want to pay for it. And I don't want to stream it because it's too fucked to stream it. But I heard mixed reviews for it. There were some good things and some bad things. Especially two screwy endings in the two main event matches. But I heard the best match of the night was Tigre Uno. New guy from the X Division taking on Manic and what was a what I heard was a very good steel cage match between those two. Great debut for T Gray Uno. Saying he's gonna add some excitement to the X Division. I'm looking forward to seeing him make his impact debut probably on Thursday. And then we had a steel cage match. A lot of steel cage matches, of course. We had a great mood up coming in with Sonata, the new X Division champion. Defeating Aries, of course, apparently on the road. Taking on TV up with Yazoo against Brandon Foods and Saban defeated him in that match. I heard uh, Sam Shaw Anderson was going to okay. I heard uh, the it was the last man standing in a cage with uh, Storm and Gunner. I heard that match was pretty good with Gunner getting the victory. Uh, Bobby Lashley returned to TNA for the first time in years. 
by accepting EC3's open challenge after they did wide out Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle was, uh, I, I was wondering how they're going to ride out Kurt Angle. Is he going to really wrestle against EC3 or not? Well, he didn't. But he actually accept the challenge. Now we had uh, Madison Ray retaining a knockouts championship. And unfortunately, thanks to the screwy ending, Magnus retained the world title over Joe. Thanks to a screwy ending with Abyss coming through the floor and beating the crap out of Joe at the baseball bat made a barbed wire, helping Magnus get the victory. The only good thing is, Team MVP won. I'm very surprised that Team MVP won leave the lockdown. With Willow, aka Jeff Hardy, making his debut. Of course, I thought Willow was a different person, but then I found out that Willow's an alter ego of Jeff Hardy, which is why he was in it, because Jeff Hardy, the person named Jeff Hardy, wasn't allowed in the match by Dixie Carter because he walked out, broke the contract. So his alter ego, Willow, took his place in the legal lockdown match. And Bully Ray was the insurance policy that Dixie Hope was going to help her get the victory. But as Bully Ray looked like he was going to sign with Bobby Roode, as Bobby Roode was about to put MVP through a table when the lethal lockdown roof came down, MVP had a big surprise as MVP was saved by Bully Ray putting Bobby Roode through a table. Isn't that weird that Bully Ray was the lead of Ace and Ace, a person who's killing, who was killing TNA and ruining TNA, now Bully wants to save it all of a sudden? It's kind of a screwy ending here. Is Russo still writing this shit? Anyway, so it was a mixed bag again. Some decent action from what I've read, but the two screwy endings, the two main matches having screwy endings with Abyss coming in and Bully Ray kind of screwing Team Dixie. So let's see the aftermath of that on Impact on Thursday. Now on my wall preview. Before we get to my wall preview, of course the Hall of Fame is coming up for WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, coming up April the 5th, of course, on the WWE Network day before Mania. Uh, Ultra Warrior, the inductee has been announced. An uh, inductor. Surprise to some people, but not too many people are surprised. That Ultra Warrior has chosen as an inductor is going to be Linda McMahon, who hasn't been on WWE television in a long time since she left the company as a CEO to Failed to get in Congress. <laughs> you know, since all failed Congresswoman attempts. So we know two inductors thus far. We got uh, Jake the Snake Roberts being inducted by Diamond Dallas Page. We got Oscar Warrior being inducted by Linda McMahon. Linda McMahon. Lita, I'm hoping Trish inducts her. We have probably going to find out more inductors soon for Lita. And Paul Bear, who I think should be inducted by Undertaker. I even heard CM Punk was going to induct Warrior before he left. But anyway. And maybe we'll find out about Scott Hall soon. If he gets officially announced. But now on my wall preview. For tonight in Memphis, Tennessee. Home of the King. Top 5 questions that must be answered tonight. Question number 5. We got another guest on tonight. Where we'll go down with LL Cool J. Now, last week we had, of course, Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad and the Need for Speed movie last week. Now this week, we got LL Cool J. Now it makes kind of sense because USA Network airs replays of his show NCIS, NCIS Los Angeles. So it makes a whole lot of sense, you know, cross promotion. You know? And LL must be a good wrestling fan. And I like LL. I've seen LL in concert. But still we'll see how LL does as a guest host tonight. Or guest star as he's saying now. Question number four. What will go there with the shield tonight? Are they gonna officially break up? Now, as we saw last week with Seth Rollins rocking out on the six-man tag involving his team, The Shield, leaving Waynes and Ambrose and Bruce helpless against the, the Wyatts, they kind of broke down on SmackDown on, the, on Friday. So let's see if they finally patch these up or definitely going to break up and it towards a big match at Mania. I would love to see a triple threat match between all three of them for the United States Championship. That would be a great way to break up the shield and finally make Ambrose defend the U.S. title for once. So we'll see what they do with it. And speaking of possible new matches for Mania, that will lead to question number three. Will any, will any new matches be made for Mania? Side note, will Triple H accept Daniel Bryan's challenge? I, I don't want that match to happen. Of course, like many others, I would love to see D. Bryan a triple threat match, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. That they're going to add Deep Ryan a triple threat match against Batista and Orton. So they're probably, as of right now, probably going to have Triple H and Deep Ryan face off in Mania. And like I had predicted, I think Deep Ryan could win the title 
the night after Mania on Raw. That's my prediction. I hate to say that prediction, but after the last couple last nights at the Mania has been awesome, this could be an exception. Like the walls of the Mania have been excellent. We've seen big channel changes at Raw after Manias. Last year, Dolph Ziggler. That can happen again with D-Bot. Question number two. What will Taker say as Taker will be on Raw tonight? Can I answer Brock Lesnar after that contract signing two weeks ago and Lesnar destroying Mark Henry delivering a message to Taker? What kind of mind games will Taker start playing on Lesnar tonight? Lesnar may be at Raw as well. So we'll see these two show down again tonight. It makes some sort of announcement. Speaking of announcement, that leads to question number one. What is the major announcement that Hulk Hogan's promising tonight? Now the host of WrestleMania 30, Hulk Hogan, is slated to make some sort of announcement for Mania tonight. Maybe it's no Hall of Fame announcement. Maybe it's a match announcement. But whatever it is, we'll see what happens with this and more tonight on Wall at 8, 7 Central on USA Network. That is it for the Tech Sports for today. See you later tonight for my Wall Review. With that in mind, you've all been attacked by the sports news from Zach. Thank you again for watching. See ya. Weed the shirt. Yes. Yes. Yes.